Hello and welcome to the second game of this best of three. We are watching the third place decider for the AMD Premier League. We are in the second season of that one. And we're seeing Zenith taking on Rattlesnakes. And we already see an IO Tiny pickup. Zenith is one game ahead in this best of three. This is game two. With me is Kanaz. Kanaz, welcome back. Good to be here. So, IO is Tiny. Yeah. Yep. It was actually Rattlesnake that played IO Tiny yesterday. Zenith played a lot of IO Tusk uh, two times in a row, which they lost both games with, by the way. So I'm curious to see how Zenith is try gonna try to use this one. It's a bit more standard than their Tusk pickup. Uh, the Razor and the OD are banned out. We still have the Alchemist in the pool, and the Shadow Demon Darcy are still in there as well. But Bat Rider and Nyx Assassin removed as well, and it's uh, up to Rattlesnake to decide what they want to have last. Maybe they still want a Weaver or something. Yeah, um, obviously they have so many options left. I like the Razor by Rattlesnake. Really got them last game. They did just nothing on that Razor, and it kind of shut them down, put them way behind. Uh, IO Tiny, it's not a combination we see as much as we used to. I think teams really liked Tiny as carry for a while. Uh, when everyone figured out that Aghanims on him was pretty strong when it came to pushing down towers. Yeah. Uh, still definitely a good combination with IO, maybe a little bit less good than some of the blink heroes because typically you use the IO for throwing then for, to get the stun, but that means Tiny still has to walk up, whereas a lot of those blink heroes you utilize the t they're with a blink and then the melee heroes right up on them. They're gonna go with the Visage pick here for Rattlesnake though. Yeah, Weaver still burned out together with the Chen and Enchantress, but Visage is always a nice support to have. Can fit into every role basically in terms of uh, of how you want to lane things. Aggressive and safe lane, he's done it all. I like him more as an aggressive laner though, and hopefully that Rattlesnake will uh, abide and actually run an aggressive trailing with that Visage, but we'll see. Still have the Shadow Demon in the pool. Shadow Demon Visage combination is pretty successful, so could be an option. But we'll find out uh, how they want to run that. Zenith, of course, have the last ban right now, and also the first pick. So we'll see what they want to pick up together with their IO and the Tiny. How, if they want to already secure themselves a very strong mid-game hero, because of course if you pick up an IO Tiny, you've got this high prime time when Tiny is level 8, 9, and IO is level 6, and they can start ganking, and you want to have heroes that can do things with those ganks. So can either push towers afterwards Zenith, or you know ganks. even more ganks just kill everybody off rather than just one hero. So we'll see how Zenith will try to uh, dominate that mid game without losing too much of their early game and also too much of their late game because they have to be wary because if Rattlesnake is able to shut that tiny IO uh, down then Zenith also has to be having a bit of uh, insurance that they will also be able to get the late game. Yeah, certainly they could, uh, I don't know, I'm interested to see how they're going to end up using the IO. Sometimes, there's two different really ways, you mentioned that the ganking lineup, and that's certainly something they could focus on, try and go all in with that ganking potential, and Treant sort of fits in with that role, or alternatively they pick a team that's really good at farming the map, and then just use that threat of the IO tiny ganks to sort of force Rattlesnake to play a little bit more defensively than maybe they'd like to, they can't really farm as aggressively on the map and just slowly over time build up the advantage. With the Triumph pick, I think they're probably going to favor the ganking lineup and, you know, it's Zenith, so I th always think that's the lineup they're going to favor. But uh, we still remains to see exactly what they're going for and if they're going to have some success with this IO. These Eastern teams still feel like they're struggling a little bit to get the IO down. Yep, apart from DK. DK uses it quite uh, effectively, I've been uh, seeing. But, uh, but yeah, I, I agree. We'll see how they end up uh, using that. With Trian Protector already shows no Tusk, most likely. As Trian is, uh, is a kind of support, so unfortunately for all the people saying in this chat that we will see the Tusker, I think that's not going to be happening. But who knows, maybe they will surprise us. Rubik will be the support that Rattlesnake goes for as their secondary support. We've got, of course, the Telekinesis to set things up, and of course the Fade Bolt helps out. Shadow Demon, not the one in the end. So, one of the first games that we've seen that Shadow Demon is like completely ignored, not banned, nor drafted. And that's something that we don't really see anymore lately. It's, he has his ins and outs though. Like sometimes everybody wants to play him and then nobody wants to play him and then everybody wants to play him, etc. Same thing goes for Bane, even though Bane is a little bit less popular uh, regardless. Well, let's see what Zenith wants to pick up. We still have the mid lanes needed. So they could... Uh, re Never mind. 
Yeah, oh, Timbersaw. We actually saw Timbersaw solo mid, right? But it was Zenith um, that was up against it. Oh, well, I didn't see that game. Okay, so, so Zenith, uh, they they had someone, or maybe not Zenith, but someone picked Timbersaw. And they put him solo mid. And I think K it was actually KP. KP did that the other day. Yeah. yeah, KP did that. We cast that game. Yeah. It was uh, Arteezy. And it was up against the Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker, right? Yeah, and Bloodseeker got destroyed. Got destroyed. Utterly destroyed. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is a Timbersaw mid. We've seen him on the offlane as well, though. We'll, so we'll uh, see how he does. And another robot guy picked up with Clockwork on the board. But, uh, but yeah, the Timbersaw. I like it. It's a bit of a sad thing that he's on the same team as a Trayan Protector. I think that's not very nice for Trayan, but... They're best friends. They are? Yeah, they're best friends. Is that the lore? Timbers no, I'm pretty sure Timbersaw is afraid of Trayan Protector and lore. Okay. There's no way Timbersaw's not afraid of Trayan Protector and lore. Yeah, because you said, you said yesterday, or uh, maybe the day before or something, that he is afraid of trees, so afraid of Trayans and such. Yeah, uh, but yeah. That's what's going on with him. He's insane because of trees kill his family. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, so uh, Zenith, they have the four strength hero lineup right now. That's not something you see every day. There have actually been no agility heroes picked up in this game. And that's pretty much insane, considering most common carries, except maybe like Nakes, uh, really are agility heroes. I guess Alchemist is the other exception he is on the other side. I'm gonna tweet, and hopefully there's also no, an, another strength hero picked up, but we'll see. They have actually the first pick. We have the Puck band out, we've got the Spectre band out, which is quite surprising, but who knows, maybe it works. And depending on if they want to put Timber Saw mid, we need either an, uh, an offlaner or... Oh, it could be the Beastmaster. He is strength. Uh, I mean offlaner or um, mid hero. Uh, they have a lot of options for what they can try and do here. They could run, pick up like another carry and send Io Tiny to the mid lane, Timber Saw off lane, Trian just sort of pulling in the jungle and someone who could sort of safely farm in that top lane. They could run the tri lane, Tiny, Io, Treant, top, Timber Saw either off or middle and pick up the other one there. I think they favor Zenith typically run Timber Saw in the off lane, if I recall correctly, every time I've seen them use it. Personally, uh, it's certainly possible they've sent it to the mid lane, but I think that was just something KP did. Well, they're taking their time. Perhaps they want to try out new tactics with uh, what other people have been doing. I mean, they haven't really been playing uh, up to par lately. I mean, they're in the third place decided while well, they were one of the two favorites to take the whole thing. So, uh, not making it all the way. And, and maybe they just want to wanna experiment a little bit more. Though they are, of course, the team of experimenting. I mean, Zenith is known for their unorthodox drafts. But uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what they end up going for. They are taking their time though. They're using up all of their bonus time to decide what they want to have last. Or maybe they're deciding how they're going to run things. Five Could of course be remaining. one as well. Oh, no more tree guys. Rattlesnakes turn yeah, more tree guys. So Timbersaw is with like his two biggest enemies, as far as I can tell here, uh, with both Tree and Protector and Nature's Prophet on his team. Uh, it's Shadow Fiend, last pick from Rattlesnakes, so thinking that might be in the probably is in the mid lane. Uh, but who knows what they're gonna do? Luo is picking it up, so who I don't know. They have a lot of options as well. I think it's going to come down to mind games and what they think is the best matchup for any of these heroes. Zenith, I, I don't know exactly who they're going to want in the mid lane. It could be the Timbersaw. It could just be Io Tiny. Yeah, well, it will be uh, Weyamate on the Timbersaw, so I'm, I'm expecting Timbersaw then. It's a bet. It, yeah, I mean, you can go, yeah, you can, you can no. go either way. I mean, he could go on the safe lane as well. It's 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 all uh, it's all up up in the air, I guess. Let's see who plays uh, what then. Uh, in case we didn't see that just yet, uh, Zenith once again dire side for this one. Second game of this best of three. We are in the third place decider for the AMD Premier League second season. Zenith versus Rattlesnake, and Zenith will have X Freedom playing the Isle. It will be X Y playing the Nature's Prophet on the Tree and Protector. It is Ice. With Yamate on the timber saw, and then uh, that will leave Ice, Ice, Ice playing the tiny, and I believe that makes five. So in a five versus five game, that's all there is to Zenith. 
Yep, and we're going to have Rile Snake on the Radiant side of this game. We have Luo on the Shadow Fiend, currently hanging out down in that bottom safe lane, so it looks like he might be sticking with that. No, he's hanging towards mid, just trying to make sure it's confusing, I guess. Icy is down there as well on the Clockwork. Uh, we have Segem is going to be on the Visage, uh, so it looks like he'll be up in the top lane. They're going to run an aggressive tri lane here with Kabu, once again, on the Rubik, and finally Lamp on the Alchemist, so it does look like Lua will be in the mid lane on that shadow He was just kind of hanging out bottom, being friends with Icy. Yeah, and Icy now showing that he'll be on the bottom lane. He walked past the ward. I like this ward from Zenith. It kind of... Uh, they went well, They went into the jungle with all of them just to place that one, and, and they see everything with that. They now know that that clockwork is indeed by himself on the bottom lane as he is going to exchange some blows with XY. Let's see what kind of rune it is. It is uh, top. Battle Warrior Assault, so they're X-Pi, actually taking quite a bit of damage there. We're gonna see if maybe Icy can do something, because X-Pi, he can't do anything right now. This might be already a first blood. That's a first blood. Icy gets it. Well, that's nice. In the meantime, top lane, we might have a second blood. Ice, Ice, Ice in a lot of trouble. We'll end up going down as well. That's two kills across the board. Going the way of Rattlesnake and all that, because really tiny Ice, Ice, Ice. He wanted to pick up the double damage rune and ran into three heroes for that and then you've got a telekinesis, you've got a soul assumption, you've got a ton of harassment and uh, you've got a dead rock guy. Yeah, that, the rock guy is quite dead. I. So all, most clockworks don't get uh, berry assault at level one and maybe that's why XY wasn't expecting it but I see obviously just didn't get a point in anything at first and would have gotten cogs if he needed it Battery Assault is very easy to get kills with at the beginning of the game because they can't actually fight you at all. So I see just stood next to XY, gave him the Battery Assault, and XY died. Now he has to be careful because he's down a level. And if Clockwork walks up to him again, especially with these boots, he's probably dead. Yeah, here we go. You, you, mean, you mean like this? Because XY, I mean, exactly. you might think he might be able to TP out, but because of that Battery Assault, he won't be able to. Maybe the blocks will allow him to, but so far, not so good. I see, gets harassed a little bit by creeps. Has to be careful here. Might not want to die if this flare comes in. Doesn't get the kill though, but does of course force XY back. Still has this lane in favor of Icy. The lane, however, now is pushed out and XY still standing there. He's actually gonna TP back to base. Thank you for making my nerves calm. The flare will of course fly in, um, or maybe if will fly in. It's not really, of course, anymore because XY will not die from it anymore. Might be delayed back to the lane. Yeah, uh, so Clockwork already dominating the plane, and that's pretty bad. Uh, Timbersaw seems to be struggling quite a bit against Shadowfiend. I don't know how this matchup is going to go. I kind of was expecting Timbersaw to come out ahead eventually. But, uh, I don't know. It looks like Shadowfiend does have the lead for now. Eventually, I think this Living Armor with the just burst damage Timbersaw can do is going to make Luo have to be very, very careful. The real interesting thing, though, is that this top lane, I think it should go in favor of Rattlesnake. They already got that initial kill on Ice Ice Ice, and we'll see if they can keep that pressure on them. Yeah, so far Ice 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 has still managed to get five last hits. Lanham only sitting on ten. Uh, still doing pretty, quite okay, but it's still... Uh, having Ice 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 still getting these last hits, that's actually quite good for Zenith. I mean, you already said they, in theory, should be losing. Especially because Ice Ice already got picked off. But as long as they're getting levels and it's, uh, some sort of amount of farm and not die anymore, they're actually doing quite okay for themselves. And so far, Ice 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 is getting some of those last hits. Might not be all, but it's still uh, it's still not bad. Though, of course, the one thing that is annoying for them is that they, uh, they're they trying to get some, some creep pooling going. And they, they can't... Look at that! They're actually expecting something that is blocking the camp. I think that they might have blocked their own camp. Maybe this... Uh, this ward is a little too far to the right. What do you think? Like, there's a there's a line here. You can place wards on this side and on this side. One blocks, the other one doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the one that blocks or not. I think it does. Well, it's going down now. So we'll see if they respawn. If they do, then... Oh, too oh, late. Well, that uh, this one's gone. Yeah. Uh, so that pulling, not too. really going, I think, the way they want to. Looks like freedom... It's going to get a pull to the small camp, though, so they'll at least have that. Yeah, that's that, that's nice for them, and I mean, it will in the end push the lane out because it's not a full camp, but perhaps uh, Freedom can indeed do what he does right now and pull another wave so that they indeed will be um, 
yeah, they will only be having one range creep cutting their way. In the meantime, on the top lane, Ice Ice Ice, he tosses Lanham back and actually is able to get away with that. Pops himself, gets chased down by a very ferocious creep with his sword up, but he goes for for the range creep that just escaped. So, Ice Ice still with his self was able to get away. Very nicely done for him by tossing his enemy away. Yamate in the meantime up against the Luo. I mean, 26 for 7 for Luo. Yamate 14 for 0, but the harassment is actually still very annoying to Luo, even though he's winning the lane on last hits. He still can't be uh, sitting around being happy with it, because he has to be careful f about that harassment that comes in. Yeah, once Timberstar hits level 6, I think he can get these kills, start getting these kills on Shadow Fiend. Uh, we'll see if that happens or not, but uh, Chakram is pretty much necessary, because he has to be able to close the distance for, as, for right now. To hit him with Whirling Death, obviously yeah. not picking up those points in Timber Chain early. Uh, since it's not uh, the most useful skill in the mid lane where trees are a little bit more sparse. So I think it's the advantage in this lane might start shifting towards Yamata if he can start to lay on that harass, the pressure once he gets to Chakram. But he has to be careful, if he gets nuked down, I don't think he's going to be able to come back. Yeah, he does have Chakram right now, but yeah. Yeah, he gets Living Armor indeed, right you said. I mean, he should be okay-ish. Uh, at least it's not die for now. Might be able to get a kill, especially if there's going to be some uh, rotations. But so far, the supports on the top lane are actually quite far behind on levels, so rotations will be quite tough to do. We still have all uh, top lane, the, the entire trial lane basically for Zenith is still level 3. Well, we have a level 4 upon the Rubik, we have a level 4 upon Lanham, and the other guy who actually rotated is Sagam. He is level 3, but he is close to being level 4. And that's Clockwork taking down the Nature's Prophet again. This time he gets a little bit lower for it, doesn't have. A bottle that's full, doesn't have a self, so we'll have to walk back to base, but still gets himself a solo kill on that Nature's Prophet for the second time this game. Yeah, Nature's Prophet is really, 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 really struggling down there. He's He can't really afford to be giving away these kills. Uh, top lane is struggling as well. Ice 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 obviously not getting the best of farm, especially when compared to Alchemist. I mean, we see Ice Ice is on 9 last hits, 10 now. Alchemist has almost 30. Yeah, He's gonna stun him now. They might. He's go trying on this. to bait, I think. Avalanche still goes through. Lanham is still in a lot of trouble, though. In comes a toss. Not gonna be enough damage. Maybe the spirits will get him. In comes Lua looking for the raises. Finds himself a tiny, and that's gonna be Alchemist. One hit needed for Io. They take down two, and they lose none. And they make sure that Ice is actually running for his life right now. And that's gonna be a successful rotation from Lua. Do you think he stunned himself on purpose? To make Zenith go in there? Uh, wait a second, that's gonna be XY dead again. I mean, that's the same thing that happened previous time. That was just cogs, battery assault, and you cannot escape. Hookshot was used to get him in there, but... Yeah. This is this is a lane one. Nature's Prophet, you might want to go into the jungles. Well... Nature's Prophet's just trying... He, he's doing okay in terms of last hits in this bomb lane. He doesn't want to be giving away these kills, so it's, that's why he's going to move around now. And try and head to the jungle, but as long as he's getting experience, he's getting some farm... In this bottom lane, it's typically better than just hanging out in the jungle. Uh, I don't know if he's going to end up jungling now. It looks like he's going towards mid lane. Maybe they're going to set up a gank here on Luo. Yeah, Sprout goes in. Is there going to be any TPs? Perhaps Shekram will be there. Luo uses take charge, but it won't be enough. Living armor up on Yamate will make sure that the tower doesn't really hurt that much. And that's going to be the first skill for Zenith, actually. First skill this game, seven minutes in after they're already six skills behind. We've seen this before though, uh, when a team was very far ahead in the first ten minutes, but when mid game comes, Zenith still has a lineup that has an IO, has a tiny, still very scary, so we can't really tell anything by the amount of kills just yet. Yeah, they're not ahead. This isn't an insurmountable lead by any means. This is a 2k gold, 2k experience lead at like eight minutes. Which is quite a bit, but they're still not out of it. The real problem, I think, is that Ice 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 is really getting nothing. He's up to 17 last hits now, Ooh. and I think most of the time... I see, he finds Yamate. Yamate gets himself away with the nice hook, but now in comes XY, and that's finally gonna be some uh, revenge. XY helping kill off the Clockworks killing spree. The Timber's still taking the last hit. That's something that he really needed, that extra gold. An experience. Yeah, definitely. He's doing really well on this Timber saw, actually, and I don't... I don't know if Clockwork really thought he was going to be able to get that kill. You have a lot of burst damage and on a hero like Timbersaw, and it's mostly good right now while you're next to him. So Clockwork's typical strategy of walking up next to them and just like making sure they can't do much doesn't really work particularly well against Timbersaw. Uh, of course, with the help of the Nature's Prophet, it's a very easy kill for them to get. And, I mean... 
also, the uh, Whirling Death, it's instant, so Battery Assault doesn't really stop you from casting it, like, for example, other things stop, uh, for example, the Shrek can't cast a stun while he's uh, in the Battery Assault, because he can't, keeps being interrupted. Telekinesis from the tree line, they go for Ice Ice Ice, Kabu wants to go in, Soul Samson is gonna be enough, one more hit needed, but they can't get it, in comes a tether, and Freedom will save Ice Ice Ice, Flare misses, and that's gonna be uh, these two back home. I mean, Ice 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 is having quite a tough time here in terms of last hits, in terms of net worth even, he is he's just doing really bad. Five people of Rattlesnake on the top lane looking to take down a tier 1 tower in the meantime. Yeah, I, they're gonna make a smoke kink up here now. Ice Ice Ice, I don't know if they want need to create room for him. You'd think that they would want to just so he could start being aggressive. But if Timbersaw and Nature's Prophet can start getting ahead from the other lanes, it can still go okay for them, but here comes the initiation. Yeah, nice Chakram though. That's going to be Sagam and Rubik down to the floor. Lanham, a lot of trouble as well. Dance is done, tries to run, but I don't think it's going to be running for long. Luo gets himself a kill on the Timbersaw, gets tossed up by Ice 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 and goes down still by the Nature's Prophet. That is a 2 for 4 exchange in favor of Zenith, a fight that they desperately needed. Yes, they lose a tower for it, but they get the two most important heroes there. They get Luo's, Luo, and they get the Alchemist, the two highest net worth hero on the map. Yeah, they take both of them down, and I don't... So a little bit sloppy play there by Zenith if letting Timbersaw die. Wisp and Timbersaw stood directly adjacent to each other, trying to burst down the Alchemist before the stun came off. And they almost got it, but because they were staying next to each other, and they didn't finish him off in time, he got the stun that hit both of them, and... They were also in range for two raises from the Shadowfiend. So both of them took a ton of damage before really they could do anything. Oh, they're gonna try to go for Lanham again. He's charging up a stun already, looking for a target. Box to the Shakram again. Finds a kill, actually, up on the Nature's Prophet. Can Yamate finish it off? It looks like he might be able to, but that Chemical Rage makes him so tanky. In comes a Hookshot, Hookshot misses. Yamate, he knows he's no longer alone. Shakram still slows him down, and that's gonna be a kill. But in comes Icy, and out goes Yamate with the chain. That's going to be an exchange of kills that, again, goes in favor of Zenith. Yeah, and Zenith, if they can keep coming ahead and definitely getting kills on these heroes like Timbersaw, who have a big mid-game impact, and especially just draw attention away from where Ice 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 is playing, it can really help them sort of get back into it. They're not, uh, I guess after getting those kills, the experience lead is kind of dwindled to nothing, but there is still a good lead on the side of Rattlesnake. They are out farming them in their lanes. So they're going to have to hold on and try and make something happen still. Yeah, we do have the IO still at level 5, so that's kind of sad. Maybe when he's level 6, so we're going to see Rattlesnake being a little bit more careful, because for the very thing that you said during the draft, you can... You know, even the threat of a relocate is, is going to be something that Rattlesnake will probably respond to, depending on how far they feel like they are ahead. We actually have a smoke up for Zenith, Freedom and Ice and uh, Yamate going towards the bottom lane. We'll walk past the Radiant Award. And we'll see if they can get a kill up on maybe Sagam or Lanham, whoever they find first. He's coming from the front. Well, actually, they're gonna try for it. Uh, Chemical Rage still up. XY TPing in there first. Lanham charging up a stun. Might be able to get a good one here. Sun's up ice. No follow up because, I mean, there's four heroes there and Rattlesnake don't want to re really go in there. In the meantime, on the middle lane, we've got Ice 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 looking for a pickup. Chakram slows down Icy. Inside the cogs, there's a toss as well. And the Whirling Death will finish it off. Clockwork goes down. For the second time this game to the Timber Saw. In comes uh, the stun up on Ice Ice Ice. Soul Sumption there as well. And Visage will be able to pick up the kill on the bottom lane. It's not over just yet though, because in comes Freedom. Down goes Visage, and Lanham is able to TP himself out. But again, Zenith, they're, they're showing why their lineup is strong. Mid game, that's where they shine, and, and they definitely uh, execute it. Yeah, and with that, IO is level 6, so it does have that relocate. I don't know how threatening the relocate gank is at the moment, though. Yamate is just... Or, uh, not Yamate. Ice 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 is not that strong. So I think there's a chance that he might try and work with Yamate a little bit on this Timber Saw. If they're going to go for any sort of re relocate ganks. He has the damage right now. Whereas Ice Ice Ice, because of his really rough start, doesn't have anything picked up. Going for drums now. Just sitting on basic brown boots as well. Uh, it's going to be kind of awkward for him for a while and I think they just need to try and give him some time to catch up get some items up before they try and force him to get really aggressive with these relocate gangs yeah I, I agree I would like to see the relocate gangs with the timber saw as well and also of course I mean you've got the chain so the tether sun 
could be could be hit with that if you don't go too far. Of course, that's uh, that's the risk that you will have. We'll see if uh, how aggressive they all try to defend this uh, tier one tower. And I mean, maybe this is Rattlesnake's def defense already to the level six on the IO. They group up with five and they go middle. Still, the Nature's Wrath bouncing through, doing quite a lot, quite a bit of harassment here. In comes Zenith though, and down goes the toss. And there is a no overgrowth though. Because the battery assault! Oh, there we go! That was about time! But this time it's only up on two. Down goes the team assault, down goes the tiny, down goes freedom! And that is gonna be the last one alive for Zenith! That was a bit of an awkward initiation. I don't think the toss was really aimed properly because it would only hit up on the Clockwork and the Rubik. And in the meantime, the rest of Rattlesnake could just take down the main heroes of Zenith. That was not a gank. Yeah, oh, that was a really awkward fight. Yep. I'm not sure why they threw tree at Clockwork. I mean, you're right. They threw that tree in to try and get that initiation with Overgrowth. Yeah. It's a really cool play. It could have worked out amazingly if he caught several heroes. Instead, they threw him off to the side at <laughs> to Clockwork. To the side. I mean, it was, it was like people standing right there. And everybody was standing in the mid lane. Just Clockwork slightly off looking for that hook. And then, boom. Toss in. Yep, that's the guy that was outside of the fight and is also one of the only people that can just continuously interrupt <laughs> the overgrowth. I mean, the telekinesis was first. We already saw Ice trying to go for it then. Then the battery assault came. He struggled a little bit, got it off in the end, but by that time, nobody was around him anymore. And that was just awkward play because at the same time, Ice, Ice, Ice and um, Yamate were already dead, dead at that point. So, Rattlesnake looking good after that team fight. But they look to be also being forced to, into another fight. I'm gonna go for Lanham first. He pops his Shadow Blade, charging up his son already. Looking for a pickoff. Finds it. Yamate, he won't be living much longer. He is already dead. The toss goes in, does quite a lot of damage to Kabu and Luo. But the hook shot hits up on Ice Ice Ice. Cogs on the other side. Ice 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 will be maybe sent back. No. Ah, there's still a kill. Freedom looking to uh, save his teammate. Won't, won't be able to. Has got the living armor up, but it doesn't last long enough and that's a double kill for Icy and another three heroes dead on the side of Zenith with no victims on the side of Rattlesnake. Yeah, uh, Chakram got stolen there by Rubik. Which that's is like the best spell to steal. <laughs> it's, it's a fun a spell to steal. That's it's a fun spell yeah. to steal, I'll agree with that. It's okay, it burns through his mana pool rather quickly and he wants to be using those for utility spells mostly. Um, I don't know, uh, that was another just weird engagement from Zenith. They're allowing themselves to get into these fights where they're always like completely out of position getting caught. Like, right now, what is XY doing? They're trying to fight the Treants and now Luo's yeah. gonna come in. In comes Raises, care for the living armor. BKB gets turned on by Luo, down goes the Requiem of Souls, looking for Ice, finds Ice. Oh, no, it gets cold. That was indeed a bit overextension. We had the, like, the tree was hanging still around the tree line. He was invisible in nature's sky, so all of a sudden got visible, walked back, where, I mean, XY was looking for some, some familiars, but couldn't find them, and, I mean, Rattlesnake wasn't, e was barely away from the lane, so they were still hanging around, figured, you know what, we might as well try. And they, uh, fail. And, I mean, we already see a big difference right now. We see a BKB up on Luo. We see the Shadow Blade up on Lanham, who is also building towards the BKB most likely. And I mean, four staff up on the Clockwork. We've got more and more core items complete up on these heroes. Well, if we look at Zenith, we still don't have those drums complete up on Tiny. And you already mentioned that was a while back. And he's still building towards them. And now he finally has it. Congrats, Ice, he Ice, finished. Ice. He finished his phase boots, though. Yeah. He, was, he only had brown boots when I was talking about before. Oh, so Lanham. he's gotten about some... Bye, Freedom. Gold. Yeah... What is... Uh, maybe they can fight nice size as well. In comes the battery assault. Avalanche, not gonna hit. Hookshot in. Here goes the cogs. Toss out of the cogs, though. That's always nice. He tries to escape. He will get another sun to his face because Lanham will be able to throw it out. And that's gonna be another kill for a rattlesnake. Lanham looking for a new Lana target. Oh, the He's gonna be able to get it. Boom. Hit it. That's good. Gets himself Elgato and Alberto. And, and he gets the extra gold from Grievel's Greed, too. And the extra gold from Grievel's Greed up on the courier. Had it actually, did it actually bring something? No, it was empty. Well, that's, that's a it, blessing uh, it in brought him, disguise. Yeah, it brought him his drum recipe. Oh. It delivered it right before it died. So I guess he got his drum recipe and gave yeah. the other team like Ooh. that much gold. Yeah, I would say being really happy as the mechanism at the moment because that keeps him alive or kept him alive, depending on if he'll live now or not. Kabu with the Chakram throw, throw, throws it out. But, nope, doesn't get a kill with it. 
That mechanism really saved them just now. Yeah, the, and also the tree living armor is helping him a ton. Yeah. He needs to be somewhat careful standing out this far. There's still heroes around. Kabu can try and initiate, and he's going to back off for now. So, Zenith, now they're really kind of on this awkward position where they have the Wisp, they want to be able to use it to the best, of, greatest effect and set up these ranks, but Rattlesnake are so far ahead that they don't really feel terrible, mostly being grouped up together, keeping the pressure on them, so they can't for go relocating around trying to get ganks off on Lanham. It's a really awkward position to be in because Wisp doesn't get better as the game goes on. x also was in a really awkward position. Uh, there wasn't yeah. even a uh, hookshot used. Icy just force staffed himself through the tree lines. He got himself uh, cogged in with uh, X, Y, and I mean, we've seen that scenario before. And it happened again. What do you think that Zenith should do right now? I mean, the mid lane, mid game should be theirs, and they started the mid game so well. But then it felt like they they threw it kind of away with the throwing of uh, the tree. It all started to go downhill. So, if you will. They literally threw the game. Can I say that? No, I can't. Io goes down still. Hookshot or chain rather. Oh, that's not where he wants to be though. He comes Lanham. Charging up his stun. Finding the stun as well. Blink forward from Luo. Rack him of souls. That's one dead. Toss is still there. Ice 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 wants to escape. Won't be able to though. Soul Sumption will bring him down. Cogs in together with the tree. Who stands in the acid spray and can't really get himself away. Living armor might help, but. Actually, he's keep nah. He is. He is alive. Living armor MVP. Icy gets himself out. Ice. Sorry, not icy. <laughs> ice, icy. Well, we do have ice, icy, and ice. Yeah. Ice in this game. It was so I think people will have to forgive you if you <laughs> mess it up just a couple times. Yeah. Uh, Zenith are in this. I don't know if there's that much they can do right here. They have the better mid game. We've been talking about it constantly, but. Mid game builds upon your early game, and with how terribly early game went for them, it was really difficult for them to really get that momentum. They managed to get that one very, very good fight off up in that top lane where they had them by surprise. They came in from behind with the smoke gank. They didn't manage to save their tower, but they took a big fight four for two. Yeah. But they've just lost every successive fight since then. Rattlesnake now playing a lot more careful. They're also chasing down and forcing Zenith to uh, sort of lose some heroes anytime they get even a little bit of commitment out of them. I don't know if they're going to be able to get anything else done here. They're just losing towers and losing map control, and they don't have farm on anyone to transition into the later stages of the game. Well, you would think Tiny would do that job, but yeah, I should have said <laughs> he doesn't have the farm by far. He will be building a Yasha right now as a, actually the hookshot missed, but they know x is trying to take the tower. In comes Luo. Fortification is there as well. Use this channel blade, but it's actually it's enough. Fate time was there. X Y lives. We'll try and TP himself out. Successfully so. Tower gets the knight. That was the last tier one tower standing on the side of rattlesnake. So all towers on their side on the tier ones now down. As we have got Lanham charging up for the stun, looking for Ice Ice Ice. Toss is there. In comes the stun still though, and I don't think that Ice 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 can live through this. Nope. Ownage once again. Ownage. Yeah, they're behind by a lot of kills, 26 to 9. They're going for tier 3s already, and I don't. It doesn't look like Zenith have any plan at all for trying to take them out here. Oh, the only Ice. hope that they have right now is that Rattlesnake overextend and kind of like, um, you know, give some kills away to keep Zenith in the game. They try to find the tree, but the tree went for the Nature's Guys. It's invisible right now, and Rattlesnake just roaming around the base of Zenith right now. Stun being charged up, stunned up, KYX, or sorry, just XY, goes down, another kill going the way of Sagam, who, who by the way is dominating on his visage. Doing quite well for himself. They didn't get a tier 3 though, and actually, in comes Zenith, they want to try and take this down, they get Luo already, they will lose their IO, but maybe they can get Lanham, Lanham has his BKB turned on, Ice 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 and the Telekinesis there, looking to run. Yamate looking to fight, finds Kabu, but Kabu has got some stick charges and has stolen living armor and is still alive until now, but he did waste a lot of time on Yamate. In the meantime, Lanham was able to get a double kill, killed off the Tiny, now looking for the next target, and he finds himself Yamate. Mechanism will keep Yamate up a little while longer. He is, of course, a escape artist. Oh, he wanted to go high ground, can't get it done. In comes Lanham, looking for the hit, looking for the stuns, and he misses, and that should be a kill. The soul, hello, kill, steal, sag. Yes. 
We've seen that before. And that's gonna be more kills going the way of Rattlesnake. They did lose Luo this time, but Luo just thought, you know what? I'll buy back, because I can. Kabu thought on this Rubik. I can buy back. I'm a sport Rubik. I'm rich. And they're back in the mid lane, and they're not ready yet to uh, to give up. The Clockwork, though, is uh, also on his way back. He has got an Aghanims, by the way. And uh, he did not buy back. He just was back. Just was back. Yes. Yeah, he finally respawned. Uh, <laughs> so he does have the Aghanims, like you meant. Oh, makes it Yamate. Ice, ice, ice. Both dead. Oh. Nice Shakram by Kabu. That's like... That's... Yeah, that's a GG. That was a brilliant yeah, Chakram right there. And that means we're gonna see a game three. Yeah, uh, not surprising at all with how this game it ended up going. We are, we'll get to the third game. It was just really awkward by Zenith. I don't necessarily think their draft was that bad. Maybe the Nature's Prophet was a little bit sketchy since you kind of expect that Rails think we're going to run the aggressive tri lane into them again. They did it last game uh, with the Visage pickup. There's no reason to expect they wouldn't really try and do it again. And Nature's Prophet isn't a really good match for Clockwork. Yeah. But he probably also shouldn't give away all of those kills early. Especially uh, the first blood. Yeah, especially not the first blood. And Timbersaw, you know, he did okay in the mid lane. Definitely didn't feed or anything, but Ice Ice struggled a lot in that top lane. So hopefully in this next game, they don't give up all those kills early, especially with such a mid game oriented lineup. Yeah, we'll see uh, the third game. Third place decider, AMD Premier League. One more game to go to decide who gets the third place and who gets that $500. So stick around. Zenith Rattlesnake will come back to you in just a moment. 